How's it going guys? My name is Arpit Roy and today I'm going to teach you how to do subnetting in just under 10 seconds. And when I say under 10 seconds, it is implied that you have the basic understanding of what an IPv4 address is and the use of various subnet masks. Now, mind you, this is not an introduction to subnetting, but rather a shortcut to the traditional method of subnetting. In this shortcut method, we will use something called the subnetting chart, which is not that difficult to make once you get the pattern and only takes you a minute or two to make the chart. The advantage of this subnetting chart is that we can skip the tedious process of the binary conversions involved and help us save time. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so what you have in front of you is the IPv4 subnetting chart. And as you can see, it is divided into two parts. So first we'll deal with the left-hand side, which will help us to determine which octet uh, of one of these four we have to work with of this IP address. All right, so let's take this IP address for example. The given uh, slash notation subnet mask is the 29 slash 29. So immediately we will look into the chart and we'll figure out slash 29 is right over here. So this immediately tells us that we have to deal with the fourth octet of the IP address, which is 176. Now we'll have to figure out uh, if you want, you can figure out the uh, the decimal mask number, which is nothing but 248. So our uh, equivalent decimal subnet mask would be 255.255.255.248. That is right. And we also have the increment, which is the size or the range of the subnet. So in this particular case, 29, we get an increment of 8. Right, so this means that the size of the subnet is nothing but eight. Now we'll look at the right side of the table and we have the multiples of eight. So we can just quickly go through is there is 176 in this table? Nah, nah, uh, yeah, there we go. So, so once you see 176 right over there, this immediately tells us that this particular IP address is nothing but the network address of that particular subnet. Uh, quite con quite confusing. <laughs> All right, let's take one uh, look at another example that I have here for you. Let's look at this beautiful example. So which subnet does the host 192.168.103.151 belong? All right, so here, first of all, we'll look at the given subnet mask. Always, whenever a subnetting problem is given, look at the mask first, which octet do you see that is not a 255 or a 0 it is obviously the octet 4 128 so now we know that we have to deal with the fourth octet of this IP address so remember 128 we'll quickly go to the uh, subnetting chart and figure out the increment right so the mask was 128 and immediately we find that the increment or the size of the subnet is nothing but 128 now we come to the multiples of 8 chart and we'll try to figure out so the subnet ranges from 0 to all the way to 127 so this is your entire subnet this is subnet number 1 and we have subnet number 2 so the first subnet ranges from 0 to 127 and then we have 128 to 255 so there we go and uh, We'll just jump back to the question that we have. Okay, we figured out there is there are two subnets, but which subnet is it that we don't know yet? So we'll go to the question, and like I said, we have to deal with the fourth octet, and this number right over here is 151. So we move to the subnetting chart. So which subnet, this or this, contains 151? Uh, uh, nope. Mm. Yep, it should be there somewhere here. Yep, 151. So definitely, this is the subnet uh, that we are looking for. So we have the answer. The subnet address would be nothing but 128. So we'll just go to the question. There we go. That is the network address. 
Now let us take yet another example to clearly understand how the chart is being used. What is the first valid host on the subnet that the node 172.17.124.41-19 belong? So as always, we look at the slash notation of the subnet mask first, which is slash 19. So let's head over to our uh, subnet subnetting chart and figure out which octet it belongs to or which octet is the interesting octet that we have to deal with 19 lies in the third octet which means that our subnet mask is nothing but 255.255.224.0 right and this also gives us the increment of 32 which means that the subnet that we are going to find has a size of 32 right so we head over to the multiples of 8 chart and uh, we have to figure out the size now I have bolded these uh, numbers which is uh, in the multiples of 16 so the given increment is 32 so we can figure out that uh, the first subnet would be 0 to 31 the second subnet would be 32 to 63 then the third subnet 64 to 95 the 96 to 127 and so on and so forth so we can see that there are totally eight divisions right so all these now we sh we will head over uh, we'll head back to the question and we know that we have to deal with the third octet so let's find out what number is in the third octet it's clearly 124 right so we have to try and find out which subnet does 124 lie in that multiples of 8 120 so 0 to 32 nope 124 cannot lie there 32 to 63 nope 64 to 95 nope 96 to 127 yes definitely 124 is greater than 96 but less than 127 uh, so yes so obviously 96 should be the network address so let's head back to the question The subnet range is 32, and the subnet, uh, I'm sorry, and the network address is 172.17.96.0. Now, we can also figure out the various other uh, addresses, such as the first host address, last host address, and even the broadcast address. So, we can just head back to the subnetting chart. And we figured that this is the subnet that we have to work with. So 96 was the subnet uh, ID. Then obviously 127 is the uh, uh, broadcast address, right? So 127.255. The last octet will obviously have the the maximum possible value, which is 255, because that has nothing to do with subnetting as such, and. Uh, then the first host and the last host is pretty much easy. So first host is nothing but uh, one plus the network address, which is 96.1. And the and similarly, the last host address is nothing but the broadcast address minus one. So in this case, it will be 127.254. So there we go, guys. We have just uh, done subnetting using nothing but the subnetting chart that we have over here. And uh, trust me, it's not that difficult. It might seem uh, slightly, you know, uh, overwhelming at first. But then once you get the hang of using this particular subnetting chart, it should be very easy for you to subnet any given problem, any given IP address uh, thrown at to you, right? So, so let me just talk a little bit more about uh, how we can use this multiples of eight chart uh, to our best interest. So now depending upon the mask number, uh, we will have different increment values or different sizes of the subnet that we are going to find. So for different increment, the size of the uh, of this multiples of eight will vary. Like obviously for eight, it is like each of these particular numbers like 0 8 16 that is the multiples of 8 uh, but if you have other multiples like 16 so that you'll have to figure out 0 to 15 16 to 31 32 to 47 48 to uh, 63 right uh, just make sure you don't get confused because uh, 16 would be the network address of the next subnet okay so you have to just be careful in this particular uh, place right 
So similarly for 32, like we had in this previous example, would be uh, 32 to 63, 64 to 95. And for 64 would be 0 to 63, 64 to 127, 128 to 191, 192 to 255. 256 is, <laughs> it doesn't exist in the networking world because it is greater than a one octet, right? So what about four, four, two, and one? Well, <laughs> you, you don't really need a chart for four, two, and one. You should be able to figure out the size. Like suppose you have a slash uh, 30, for example, and so you know that the increment is four. So obviously, like the first subnet will be zero to three, then we have four to seven, then we have eight, to uh, 11, 12 to 15, 16 to 19, and so on and so forth. So my point being that for increments of eight and above, this table is good to go of multiples of eight. But for four, two, and one, uh, you would rather do it in your mind, all right? And uh, I also have this powers of two uh, over here, and it will help you to you know calculate the uh, the number of subnets and also the number of hosts per subnet. Okay, coming to how we can actually create this particular uh, chart. Uh, so <laughs> I mean, if someone looks at this chart for the very first time, it it will look quite overwhelming. I mean, look at all these numbers, all these rows, all these columns, and I mean, oh my God, how the hell am I supposed to make this chart? So <laughs> trust me, it is not that difficult. I mean, you just have to figure out the pattern, the specific, you know, like how, just take this for example. I mean, you have, you're mentioning the uh, slash notation. So all the uh, slash notations from 1 to 8 fall on the first octet, then 9 to 16 fall on the second octet, third, uh, then we have 17 to 24, they all fall in the third octet. So let's take for example 255.255. Dot .255 dot, uh, if you're taking 18, so we have 255.255.192.0, right? So that's pretty much straightforward. So just keep adding 111 and it's nothing it's not a tedious task now coming to the actual mask number this will help you identify the equivalent uh, decimal mask uh, because there's not all the times that you, you will get a straight you know 255 out of 255 mask number most of the times you will get something called the slash notations so this will help you map the uh, specific slash notation to the specific uh, decimal equivalent of the uh, subnet mask, right? So all you have to do is remember that for the mask number 128, you have the increment 128. So from there on, we can derive the rest of the increment. So what is half of 128? 64, right? What is half of 64? 32. What is half of 32? 16. What is half of 16? 8 half of eight, four, and so on and so forth, till you get a one in the end. Now, till now, you have a 128 and the and all of the increments. From that, we can derive the rest of the mask number. It's pretty straightforward. So what do we do? 128 plus 64, what do we get? 192. 192 plus 32, 224. 224 plus 16, 240. And so on and so forth, till you get a 255. So you can see this part of the uh, tier of the chart shouldn't be much of a problem now because now you know how you can reproduce it. Now coming to multiples of eight, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, you just start off with a zero, uh, eight, sixteen. Keep you know just keep adding uh, eight to the previous number. <laughs> just make sure that the first column is uh, zero to sixty-four, the second is sixty-four to one twenty-eight, and so on and so forth till two fifty-six. Coming to the powers of 2, again, nothing much. Power of uh, uh, 2 raised to 1 is always 2, you know, and then just keep doubling it. 2 to the 4, 4 to the 8, 8 to the 16, and so on and so forth. Now, not all of you who watch this video might like this particular method that I just explained, but those who do, please feel free to share this video with your friends and colleagues who might also benefit from it. 
Uh, trust me, I used this method in my CCENT exam and it helped me tremendously because time is of the essence in any Cisco certification exam and this particular subnetting method will definitely save your time. Just make sure you practice it enough number of times and also be able to reproduce this chart in the workbook provided to you before the commencement of your certification exam, which shouldn't take you more than about a minute or two. And uh, you know what? I have also gotten this chart printed and laminated to a size similar to that of a business card. And I have it in my wallet at all times so that anytime someone throws a subnetting problem at me, <laughs> All I do is take out this card, look at it for about 10 seconds, and give out the answer without much effort. Please feel free to comment or post any questions regarding subnetting, and I'd gladly help you out.